Before I move on to the next item of business, could I remind guests leaving the gallery that the Parliament is still in session, so if you could do so quietly and respectfully, please, I would appreciate it. The next item of business today is a Members' Business Debate on Motion No. 15408, in the name of Graham Day, on the importance of local newspapers. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Graham Day to open the debate. Mr Day, seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Let me begin by thanking colleagues whose support for the motion enabled us to have this debate today. The fact 38 MSPs from across the political spectrum supported it does, I would suggest, endorse its title, The Importance of Local Newspapers. That expression of concern over the possible threat to the future existence, at the very least the future direction, of a sizeable number of Scottish weekly titles stretching from East Fife to Ellen, Carrick to Carnoustie, Galloway to Glenrothes, I think reflects the value that we all of us place on the history and the traditions of the papers in question. The Arbroath Herald in my constituency can trace its roots back to 1838. Just last week, with the passing of Arthur Binney, we were reminded of the contribution these papers have made to journalism, not just in Scotland or the UK, but on a far wider scale. Arthur's main claim to fame may have been that he was the man who got the scoop on the discovery of the Stone of Destiny at Arbroath Abbey following its liberation from Westminster Abbey in 1951. But in a distinguished career, he went on to be instrumental in the founding of a training centre in Wales for journalists from third world countries. These papers have done much to nurture journalistic talent down the years. We permit their demise at our peril. Because while circulation may be declining across the Johnson Press titles highlighted in the motion, declining in part as a consequence of cuts, the communities served by these papers do still care about them, as evidenced by events in Lanark. The Carluke and Lanark Gazettes used to have offices in both Carluke and Lanark. The former was closed last year, followed more recently by Lanark. The depleted ranks of journalists are, I understand, having to work from home. There is a local petition being raised to get the Lanark decision reversed. So, in signing this motion and debating this issue today, we are speaking for our constituents, sending a message to Johnson Press that we want our papers to survive and we will work with them to try and achieve that. But of course, that requires the company to be willing to engage, not to become defensive following coverage of their infamous labelling of a number of titles in the stable as sub-core, giving rise to concerns being expressed about exactly what, what that means for the future of those papers. We need clarity on just how many titles are affected. We need detailed information on reported plans to split the Scottish titles into four geographical groupings. We would also want an understanding of why, whilst this doubt has been cast over the future of these titles and the reported 20 redundancies are being sought from the weekly's portfolio, the group is in advanced talks to buy the I newspaper for a reputed £24 million. Having aired the issue at First Minister's questions on January 22, I wrote to Johnson Press seeking a meeting to discuss the future of the titles located within my constituency. In doing so, I raised the status of the Carnoustie Guide and Gazette and the Kirrymuir Herald, because although neither title had been listed as being sub-core, they are produced in conjunction with the Arbroath Herald and Forford Dispatch, utilising shared staff. That approach has been met with deafening silence. But I can tell the Chamber that both are indeed on the sub-core list, meaning that now it amounts to at least 23 Scottish titles. I say at least. 23, because if the company either forgot about the Guiding Gazette and the Herald or viewed them simply as editions of the named titles, then who is to say there are not other Scottish papers that have been looked upon as sub-core, whatever that means and whatever implications that might have. Indeed, I understand a similar situation may exist not far from this Parliament, whereby the Linlithgow uh, Gazette is on the list, but no reference is made to the Queen's Ferry Gazette or Bowness Journal, which are, I believe, coming from the same stable. And if we, looking in from the outside, have concerns over where this is headed, then how must the journalists and other staff be feeling? Presiding officer, it perhaps says everything about where the employees of the company are, uh, that on the back of highlighting the situation at FMQs, I received, two, uh, received contact from two sets of staff thanking me for what they saw as a welcome supportive gesture. One long-serving member of the editorial staff told me he and his colleagues feared his newspaper might be allowed to wither to the point where the doors closed. One former editor of a number of titles within the group revealed to me that such had been the cost-cutting going on that he had members of the public wandering into the office just to check it was still open. The ending of a window cleaning to save a bit of cash had left the outside of the building looking as if it had been closed. 
Up my way, we have seen the full gamut of scaling back. Photographers done away with, reporters having taking pics added to the demands made on them, along with feeding the web presence and videoing interviews. The unique, unique identities of titles, which reflect the different communities they serve, diminished by increasing components of the paper becoming common in design and content, leaving a reduced proportion of the editions carrying genuine local content, the very lifeblood of local papers. Let me sympathise with Johnson Press here for a second. Regardless of the wisdom of some of the acquisition decisions they have taken, most notably of all the Scotsman Group, these are tough times for the print media. They are not alone in making the kind of cutbacks they have. Papers are trapped in that vicious circle whereby circulation and advertising revenues drop, so they cut costs, leading to a diminished product, so circulation and advertising revenue falls further, and on it goes. This problem is industry-wide and not just confined to this group. But the focus of this debate is on a stable of papers which, in my experience, in the face of shrinking staff numbers, increasing demands being made on them and rock-bottom morale, continue to try and practice local journalism in the right way. The thing is, I like the kind of stuff you get in these papers. I want to read about the good that's going on in our communities, rather than the unrelenting negativity which seems to characterise so much of the daily press. I'm with the community organisations that look forward to seeing that pic or that wee story about them appearing in print. And in the midst of all the challenges they face, these papers continue to give youngsters a start and train them properly. If there's a threat to the continuing existence of these titles, then how diminished will the opportunities be for youngsters to forge a career in journalism? And that matters, presiding officer. If the print media is to have a future, if these papers are to survive in some form, then we need young journalists coming through, especially when titles such as those operating under the Angus County Press umbrella train their staff to go about the job in a traditional way. I would, as an old hack, say the right way. We must do whatever it is possible to do to protect that. In closing, presiding officer, I want to be clear about my purpose in seeking to secure this debate. It was not to give Johnson Press a kicking. It was to highlight the importance of local newspapers, a subject I have spoken about previously in this chamber. The fact that the company has, it is claimed, shed around 50 per cent of the editorial posts it had seven years ago makes it little different to many others. The reputed prospect of further job losses, sadly, makes it little different to many others. This debate is about the big picture, the future of local papers that matter to their communities. Presiding officer. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate uh, speeches of four minutes, please. And I call George Adam to be followed by Claire Baker. Thank you, President Officer. And can I also take this opportunity to thank Graham Day for bringing this important debate to the Parliament? Because my colleague is quite right and correct when he states in his motion the importance of local newspapers to our communities. It is concerning when you see that publishers like Johnson Press are looking at other, uh, some of their titles and the very existence of these titles. Because we can't stress enough the importance that these local newspapers and independent newspapers have to our local press, our local uh, communities, and also to the political process locally. Because it's these titles that go to the community council meetings and report on them. It's these titles that actually find out what's happening in the local authority and scrutinise what happens in the local authority in our areas. These are the newspapers that are doing that. And, presiding officer, in Paisley, we too have a vibrant local newspaper that has shadowed both the expansion and the difficulties and challenges that our town has faced over the years. Graham Day's local paper may have started publishing in 1838, but since 1874, three years before the inception of my beloved St Murnay FC, uh, the Paisley Daily Express has brought the daily news of what is happening in the heart of our town to the people of Paisley. Uh, you could say that they have brought us uh, dispatches from the centre of the very universe. And this newspaper has had to deal with the challenges of the modern world, like some of the issues that Johnson Press are looking at at the moment and have already been mentioned by my colleague Graham Day. One, ha one time they uh, the Paisley Daily Express was printed, published and delivered in the town for the town to uh, its current incarnation, where it's part of Trinity Mirror Group and where it's headquartered in Glasgow. But they still retain an office in Paisley, staffed daily by one of their journalists, so that anyone can still pop in and talk to a journalist from the We Express. And the history of the newspaper is such that many reporters, it's similar to what uh, my colleagues already mentioned, reporters like Bill Leckie started their career in journalism at the Paisley Daily Express and went on to be a national newspaper writer in sport. And it shows you the importance to the actual industry and journalism itself. 
But I, I for one, is, are really ex extremely proud that we still have this local newspaper bringing buddies their daily dose of news and views. But the local newspapers, like the Paisley Daily Express, come into their own when in, there is a local cause to fight or a campaign to lead. Over the years, there has been many, and the Paisley Daily Express has taken responsibility of that head on. An example of this, which uh, their current campaign is to, be put, uh, to back the local council in their bid for the UK City of Culture in 2021. And I've mentioned it before, presiding officer, it's basically hashtag why I love Paisley. Now, we all know that I come to this place and tell everybody why I love Paisley and how important it is to me. But the fact that the newspaper has been very positive about this, pushing it forward, forward and directing this actual debate shows you how important it is to our town. And they are going down the idea that the Year of Culture in 2021 for Paisley can be a regenerational tool and we can use culture as part of that. And uh, that's very progressive for a local newspaper to go down there, down that very positive route. There are obviously the negatives uh, with local newspapers, where I used to have an uncle who used to love getting it on a Monday or a Tuesday to see who'd been in court, you know, because they wanted to see what had happened and if he knew anyone that had been there. But these are all parts of things that local newspapers report on, because who else? The big national titles aren't going to actually uh, report on these issues that are important to people in that community. So one of the other things is about staying positive about Paisley in these challenging times. And, uh, the Paisley Paisley Daily Express, their campaign why I love Paisley, they've actually had regular positive stories. And you can see here that you've got a local business, Pirelli's Ice Cream, sticking up for our town when they say why they love Paisley. You've got Gary Kerr, local businessman, talking about £40 million investment in a potential picture house and theatre. These are things that local newspapers are good at. These are issues that will not see the light of day in a national newspaper. So, in closing, presiding officer, I would just like to say that everyone is lucky. Not everyone is lucky enough to be from Paisley. And other local newspapers aren't lucky enough to be the Paisley Daily Express. But as long as I'm Paisley's MSP, and as long as the Paisley Daily Express continues to service our great town, then Paisley's collective voice will be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Adam, and happily the motion was drafted widely enough for you to focus on Paisley. However, can I just remind the Chamber that we don't usually have props in the Chamber. Thank you. I now turn to Claire Baker to be followed by Joan McAlpine. Um, thank you, President Officer. I'd like to welcome Graham Day's <coughs> sorry, motion for a debate this afternoon. It was clear from the number of signatories from MSPs that we do recognise the challenges that are facing the sector. Um, these newspapers are important for the coverage of local issues, for the expression of local identity and for the sharing of information. And today, no doubt, we'll all agree about the importance of good journalism and of local papers. I thought Graham Day gave a very good analysis of their value, um, but the answers to this situation are not easy. Our media landscape is changing dramatically and presents challenges for many traditional outlets. During the previous parliamentary session, I was a member of the Education, Lifelong Learning and Culture Committee, which conducted an inquiry into the local newspaper industry in Scotland. And in giving evidence to that committee, the Scottish Daily Newspaper Society summed up the importance of local newspapers well when they said... Local newspapers are integral to the communities they serve. Indeed, some go further by maintaining that local journalism is the bedrock of local democracy and public life. Certainly, there is no other part of the media providing the depth of coverage of local news and events in towns and villages throughout Scotland, reflecting the concerns of their communities, holding local government to account or campaigning on local issues. They are the voices of their communities and, above all, they are trusted. Yet even back then, it was clear that this was an industry that was facing a precarious future. The committee's decision to take evidence on local newspapers resulted from reports that were highlighting the difficulties, and in particular at the time, it was to do with the proposed loss of advertising revenue. Um, these difficulties, however, have only increased in the resulting six years, and often in ways that weren't foreseeable um, at the time. Technology is undoubtedly changing the newspaper industry and will continue to have profound effects on the future landscape. Newspapers from nationals to locals have made the progression online while embracing the popularity of social media, breaking news on Twitter and Facebook in an attempt to direct readers to their website. At the point of publication of the committee report, Facebook was steadily growing but had yet to reach the height of today. Twitter was then only four years old and had only really begun to have an impact on politics and journalism in the run-up to the 2010 general elections. 
Now it is clear that technology and, to an extent, cultural changes are having an impact on an increasingly altered media landscape. Despite the long-term acknowledgement of the difficulties facing the industry, each new story of impending job losses within Scottish titles is unwelcome. And last month's news that Johnson Press had designated 16 local newspapers um, as sub-core uh, did come as a surprise to many, not least the staff who were affected at these affected titles. And looking at my own region, uh, we can see the type of changes that were seen in publications. Um, it's not going unnoticed recently that many of the local publications have slimmed in size in recent months, and we're seeing an increasing duplication of stories between um, the bigger newspapers and the, and the smaller, more localised ones. And there are concerns that more local titles, such as the East Fife Mail and the Glenrothes Gazette, will be there to be phased out. I think Graham Day used the word wither. Um, there is a, you know, we can see the changes in the type of coverage that these papers are offering leaving out the, those smaller communities, it looks like they'll be relying more on a bigger, kind of more five-wide publication. And this would be highly regrettable as the local publications who have professional journalism, journalists working within them make a huge contribution to their communities. And in recent months, I've worked closely with the East Fife Mail on a campaign to stop antisocial use of quad bikes in the area and also on jobs for the area. And the coverage of that paper has been invaluable and I'd like to thank them for um, the contribution they've made to those campaigns and through the coverage I've been able to raise the issue, put pressure on the local agencies, raise the issue with the government and support the local community and these communities would be poorer without these titles that have served them for many years. Now I appreciate these are difficult times for the Johnson Press. Um, since 2009, around the time of the committee report, the downturn has been severe and as we pointed out we have seen a loss of production staff down from over 1,000 to just 355 and Graham Day made good points about young reporters and the opportunities that local papers give them. Um, but however, at the same time, we see Johnson Press saying that the audience has grown from just over 18 million to 27 million over the same period and that really comes from the increase in online readership. But that highlights the biggest struggle, how when news is, at the moment is so current, it's self-selecting, it's free, it's online, it's on our phones, how does a local publication survive in those times? Um, Graham Day is right that we need clarity and detailed information on the future plans of um, Johnson Press and also there are questions about why they're in negotiations with the I newspaper, news that just broke today. But, President Officer, I recognise these are commercial interests and newspapers can't run without income. But a loss of these local titles and a diminution of the professional journalism that they offer needs to be challenged and we need to find ways to support them. Many thanks. And I now call Joan McAlpine to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I'd like to draw members to my uh, register of interests, um, which shows that I am uh, employed by the Daily Record newspaper, which is uh, part of the Trinity Mirror Group. And I should also say that in the past I've been employed by Johnson Press as a columnist. Um, I would like to congratulate congratulate Graham Day uh, on securing this debate and associate myself strongly um, with his remarks and, and with his uh, motion. I actually began my uh, career on the Carlook Gazette and I was very disappointed to hear about uh, events there and uh, the closure of the office. Um, I uh, went on from the Carlook Gazette where I was employed over the, um, the summer to join the Greenock Telegraph newspaper, um, uh, which is part of uh, one of the last uh, surviving daily local newspapers, um, along with uh, the Paisley paper, as my colleague George Adam uh, has mentioned. And, uh, I grew up reading the Greenock Telegraph and uh, I remember at that time they, they didn't, uh, I don't think they took PA copy, they took Reuters copy. So you got uh, the, all the news from Greenock, Greenock Glasgow and, and Senegal and sort of different parts of the world you'd never hear about. So I think that definitely whetted my interest in, uh, in, the, in the wider world and uh, perhaps you know, steered, steered me and, and, and others in a particular direction in terms of the career. Um, the, uh, I, again, I would associate myself with the remarks of others that uh, local newspapers act as a barometer of opinion on the ground, and uh, many of the, the stories which impact uh, uh, widely and, and are discussed in this chamber actually begin life uh, on local uh, newspapers. Um, and they, often these papers act as a forum uh, as well as a mirror uh, uh, for the communities that they serve, um, which are despite often being quite small in size, are incredibly diverse. 
uh, and distinctive. Um, I think about my own south of Scotland region, for example, in some of the papers I um, most regularly have contact with, like um, uh, the Estelle and Little Liddesdale Advertiser, for example, uh, covers communities uh, in Langham, Cannon Bay, Newcastleton, Estelle, Muir. And often, as uh, Mr Day and others mentioned, these communities, uh, despite their small size, have, have a great deal going on in them with you know, so many voluntary uh, groups that ranking it up in the hundreds. And it's in these newspapers that these activities are, are publicised and, and recorded. Um, and I'd also like to praise the DNG Media Group in the south of Scotland, uh, which publishes the Dumfries Courier, the Annandale Observer, the Annandale Herald and the Moffat News. Um, and th this I think it's very important to say that th this, this group is an independent newspaper group and um, it's because of its independence, I think the independence means because it only focuses on local news, it actually um, it, 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 has a, it gives it a priority that perhaps, you know, groups, uh, papers which are own, owned by larger groups um, don't have. For example, you quite often find that in papers that are owned by larger groups, the journalists are encouraged to write the kind of stories that would be picked up by the national titles, which, as Mr Day said, um, often have a very negative slant to the kind of way they cover stories. Uh, whereas DNG Media, I have always found um, that they adhere to the principles of journalism that I was taught about in local newspapers, where you're, you're actually appealing to the whole of the community, whatever their political views, whatever. And the, the, so you have to achieve a balance as much as you can um, w without having a slant on the stories. Uh, the other thing about the DNG group is that um, because they're independent and they really value local news, um, they're looking at innovative ways to develop it and they've launched their own website, uh, DNG24, uh, and an app as well, um, which uh, is, is very, very encouraging. So I would support that and say, you know, like local newspapers are far from sub-core. They're actually the bedrock of our communities. And uh, I try to support my local newspapers through advertising surgeries or if I've got a vacancy um, in my office. And um, I would encourage others to do so. And again, um, praise that the work that they do, not just in the communities that I cover but across Scotland. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I now call Jamie McGregor to be followed by Christine Graham. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, I, I regret having to leave the Chamber before closing speeches and apologise in advance for doing so. Um, I strongly agree with the motion that local newspapers are extremely valuable to constituents and communities across Scotland. And of course, they're very, very valuable to politicians um, as a vehicle of, for expressing our sentiments and our policies and, of course, our photographs. Where will we be without them? Um, uh, they are able to cover local affairs and issues in a level of detail that other media don't do, and they're often at the forefront of local campaigns on very vital subjects. They play a big role in supporting community cohesion, and they're also important in terms of public notices and a platform for local businesses to advertise their goods and their services. Many of our local newspapers have, of course, been working in our communities for generations, centuries, some of them. Uh, the famous Oban Times of Argyle um, is not only a Highland-wide distribution, but um, an international one as well within the Scottish diaspora. The Caithness Courier will next um, month celebrate its 150th anniversary, having first been published in March the 31st, 1866. Local newspapers are also important in providing jobs to young journalists and trainees at the start of their careers, and they provide such good training for journalists who often then move upwards to regional or national newspapers or indeed other media forms. Many members of our esteemed parliamentary press corps started off on local newspapers which provided them with such a good grounding. Uh, we also have some fantastic freelance journalists in the Highlands and Islands, working for local, regional and national papers. And I was delighted to see Oban-based Moira Kerr win the 2016 Diageo Journalist of the Year Award at the recent Highlands and Islands Press Ball, and she is a credit to her profession. Congratulations should also go to the Strathspey and Badenoch Herald for winning the Newspaper of the Year Award for the second year in succession. And Chatterbox, which serves the Black Isle, uh, was named Community Newspaper of the Year, and that's just a few in my region of the Highlands and Islands. I can't name them all. Um, Graham Day 
is quite right to voice concern about the future of a number of local newspaper titles within the ownership of Johnston Press and their possible sale to other parties. I note that the motion today identifies the Butman in Argyll and Butte in my regions as a newspaper deemed sub-core. Now, I know many Butte residents would be surprised to hear this, as the Butman has such a good reputation and is very much embedded in the community of that beautiful island, and the idea of losing it is one we can scarcely contemplate. Um, at the same time, I understand economic realities and the financial pressures facing newspapers, owners and publishers as reading habits and readership demographics change. More and more people choose to get their news online rather than buying a newspaper, and local businesses choose to use one of the many other kinds of advertising that weren't available just a few years ago. I think most people, my children's age, would go to news websites, Google or Twitter, for their news and would try to get local news there as well, instead of buying the local paper. But in this context, I must mention For Argyle, their website, whose coverage of all key issues in Argyle and Butte and insightful analysis makes it such a popular news source run by Linda Henderson, a first-class journalist. So changes in how we access news is a huge threat to the future of traditional local papers and indeed all printed productions, but there must also be opportunities if local newspapers can adapt and digitalise services and make them user-friendly for people of all ages. Some national newspapers have achieved this, so there is potential, but it does take investment from newspaper owners and the publishers. So to conclude, presiding officer, I restate the Scottish Conservatives' full support for, for local newspapers and pay tribute to the efforts of all those journalists and local newspaper employees who work so hard to keep us informed each and every week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr McGregor, and I note your courtesy in informing the Chamber that you cannot stay. I call Christine Graham, and after that we will call the Minister. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. I too congratulate Graeme Day on securing this debate, and although the motion refers to announcements by Johnson Press, it also has a wider remit, although that Johnson Press includes a paper within my own constituency, the Midlothian Advertiser. Um, they are all so important local papers to keep my constituents and me informed. I have a range of them. I don't just have one, like my colleague George Adam. I have the Peeblesshire News, which covers Peebles and Tweeddale West, the Border Telegraph and Southern Reporter, covering the central borders, the corridor of the A7 and the A68. I have the Midlothian Advertiser and the Midlothian part of my constituents, actually the Evening News, the Edinburgh Evening News, as well, serving communities in Pennycook, Gorebridge and Newton Grange. All of these local papers are, for me, essential. They go into detail over issues over controversial, pl controversial planning in local areas, schools to close or not to close, what's happening, the state of the roads, why the bridge is down if the river has overflowed, the announcements, the hatches, matches and dispatches, who's been jailed, who's been fined. They make local justice public. They go through all the local festivals with all the wonderful photographs. They even raise campaigns, they raise funds, and they tell everyone what local charities are doing, and they report not just on councils, but on community councils. They're not only embedded in the community, they're knowledgeable about that community. When I first came in here, I think as you yourself, the Deputy Presiding Officer, 17 years ago, how time flies, local papers were rich in staff with reporters and photographers cub reporters, as others have said, who honed the reporting skill at the local press. Now, with 24-hour news online, 24-hour uh, news on television and online, the national press is really challenged for its raison d'etre. But local papers are not quite so vulnerable. They are vulnerable to losing advertising, but not to the reporting of news. They can take time over local issues and let a controversial issue run over weeks, not just churn it over. They, of course, sometimes break, as others have said, national stories and actually give local reporters sometimes a break into the national news. For me, as both a reader and contributor, either through my press comments or releases or my fortnightly and monthly columns, they keep me and my constituents in touch and actually keep me on my toes. Yet they are not as vulnerable, as I've said, as the nationals, but they are vulnerable and must not be lost or diminished. They remain key to keeping politicians local and national accountable. 
and they are generally without party political bias, which one cannot say about the national press. We will all rely on them in the coming weeks in the Scottish elections when they will have our manifestos and our hustings and so on. So they are vital to democracy. And to quote a border's expression, they have I been. We must make sure that I going to be. But I want to finish my short contribution on two of my favourite headlines from local papers, not on the borders, it's when I lived in Galloway. It was a Galloway Gazette. One was a big banner headline, Rami at Whop Hill. Two women each batting each other with handbags or a wee bit too much alcohol in them. A wonderful headline. And the other one, the top that wouldn't. The top cost a fortune, but I'm afraid it turned out wasn't interested in the use. And to prove this, the sheriff and the entire court went out in the middle of the field and watched the top, paying no attention to the much needed use. Where else would you have such wonderful headlines that I can still recall to this day? So I celebrate local papers and hope local people continue to buy them. Thank you very much. And can I now invite Hamza Youssef to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes, please. Thank you, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. My thanks, of course, to Graeme Day for bringing forward this very important uh, motion to the Chamber. It's hugely important. Uh, it doesn't matter which part of the country you cover, from the north to the south, the east to the west, uh, all of us in our constituencies will have a local paper, if not, uh, as Christine Graham said, a number of local papers. Uh, local press is hugely important. The Scottish Government very much in support of local news and local papers too, for a number of reasons uh, that have been mentioned, and I'll just reiterate some of them. Uh, the stories that we see in local papers often don't see the light uh, of day. Uh, I was interested to hear about George Adams' uncle looking out for whoever was going to the court. I I'm, uh, I'm saying this in knowledge, I hope, that he never saw his nephew uh, on the front uh, of those papers in any negative Way, but often newspapers I know uh, in, in my own uh, constituents in the region that I represent in Glasgow, uh, often stories uh, that take part, place in a big city like Glasgow uh, will be missed out uh, by the national press uh, because there's so many other things that dominate uh, in the city. Uh, certainly, I thought the point was also well made uh, by George and others that good news uh, gets a platform in local papers, which we don't often see in national papers. That can be anything from a local church group with a bake sale, raising money for Macmillan's, uh, right the way through to a fantastic feat, uh, maybe a marathon run uh, by somebody to raise money for another good cause. Uh, many, many good causes uh, that wouldn't often see the light of day and can often remind us that there's some good happening in the world, as well as the bad that we're often bombarded with. Uh, local campaigns uh, are given a, a real boost and, and, and a lease of life. Uh, by local newspapers. That can be from anything from uh, planning of uh, wind farms, which often no doubt uh, evokes a lot of emotion, uh, to local incinerators being, plan uh, being planned and so on and so forth. Uh, local campaigns <coughs> very much given uh, lifeline by local newspapers. And then the point that I thought was, was well made by um, Joan McAlpine, uh, Graham Day uh, and, uh, and Jamie McGregor on, on training journalists. A number of I think Jamie McGregor mentioned, uh, uses the phrase, uh, our esteemed press corps uh, in Holyrood. Uh, of course, I would concur uh, with that description. Uh, I think the training of journalists, uh, many of them that have come through the ranks of local papers, gave them that grounding uh, that they needed, doing the graft of local papers, uh, often not just writing the stories, but having to take the pictures and everything else uh, has given them a great grounding uh, for national titles as well. I know Joan McAlpine uh, went through that route. Uh, Graham Day wrote for a weekly session of paper. I myself, uh, presiding officer, although I didn't write uh, for a local paper, my dad still has the cutout from the Fraserburgh Herald when I was interning for a one Alex Salmond and I got a piece in the press uh, about a local curry shop that had come third in a national curry competition uh, and it said, Mr Sonny's uh, the competition too hot to handle at the age of 19, delighted uh, with that headline. Um, local businesses as well. Uh, we should make mention that many small uh, businesses uh, won't be able to afford to advertise, of course, in national newspapers, nor would it make sense for them to do so. Uh, but having local papers to be able to advertise, uh, again, uh, can be a lifeline for them in these times when uh, margins of profit are very, very tight. Indeed, uh, a local takeaway, a local convenience store, other local services and shops, businesses uh, rely on the advertising 
uh, and the spread that local papers uh, give them. Uh, in terms of what I think is most important for local papers and why the decision by Johnson Press is deeply worrying, is that uh, local papers keep us politicians to account. Uh, sometimes actually more than national newspapers. Now, I'm, uh, in, in terms of the government, uh, you know, we'll get inquiries coming in from national papers, uh, left, right and, and centre. But I think from those that uh, aren't in government, be it from oppositions or indeed from the backbenches here, uh, often it will be the local papers that come in with inquiries that keep us to account, that ask us our opinions on X, Y, Z issue that's happening locally and force us to have to make a decision uh, using our sound judgment uh, on those. And I think that isn't just true of MSP colleagues here but also true of local government, local authorities, councillors, uh, uh, as well as MPs, uh, of course. Now, it goes without saying, I don't always agree, uh, I don't often agree sometimes with what's in, in, in the papers. Now, look at the titles across the Johnson Press, and you know, there'll be many times stories are written that I think uh, have been unfair to the government, unfair perhaps to me personally. But that, frankly, is irrelevant. Uh, the point is that they are vital for healthy democracy. So even the, those papers uh, that uh, might have a bias uh, against uh, the government or against a particular political party, actually it's in the interest of all of us that we come together to defend them. And that's why I'm delighted that Graham Day's motion had those 38 MSPs uh, from across the party, uh, across the parliamentary chamber. Uh, yes, I <coughs> accept that Johnson Press has to face up to the economic realities. Uh, no newspaper uh, presiding officer has cracked how to make money off the internet. Uh, nobody has done that. Even those websites uh, that are viewed the most uh, will tell you that that only helps to subsidise uh, the print editions and at best they're breaking even. So even the very top ones, even the best ones, the ones that have the most clicks uh, per day will tell you that only helps them to break uh, even. Uh, in terms of uh, advice uh, for Johnson Press, I think some of what uh, Graham Day said in his opening remarks would be some good advice for Johnson Press. Some of this is about tone. Uh, we understand the economic realities of what is happening, uh, but I think a number of communities, a number of titles, a number of staff who work for these titles have been upset by the labelling of as subcore, uh, which has clearly uh, upset many communities. But also I thought what Graham Day said in his opening remarks was incredibly important about engaging. Uh, yes, uh, all of us understand the financial circumstances that Johnson Press uh, are under. Uh, we read about it, we hear about it, we meet with staff. Uh, but engage with the MSPs, engage with the local communities, and let's see if there's an alternative to have you know, the worst-case scenario, which would be to, to having to close down uh, those offices. As well as challenges that the Johnson Press and other uh, newspaper groups face, there's also many opportunities as well. I think every member of the Scottish Parliament would recognise that there's a huge appetite for news, particularly post the referendum, and actually particularly uh, amongst young people. More and more of them are going online to want to new, know what's happening in their world. But it would be a real shame, it would be a real shame uh, if uh, young people, or anybody, frankly, for that matter, uh, you know, knew everything that was happening in the home of uh, Kim Kardashian, but had no idea what was going on in the local community. Uh, in Kirk and of course. Uh, I, I don't want to make an ageist comment, but a lot of elderly people don't actually go online, and they, in particular, la rely on local papers. Yeah. Minister? Yes, well, I, I would accept and, and, and agree that point uh, as well. And even many elderly people, I mean, I have uh, many family members who are uh, older, and they will use the uh, internet and go online uh, for their information uh, as well. But it would be a real shame. I mean, and this is not to say that people shouldn't go online and shouldn't look for, uh, you know, uh, news that is of interest to them. But it would be a real shame if that was done to the detriment of knowing what was happening in the local community. So, uh, to conclude, uh, Presiding Officer, I support and um, the government supports for, for heartedly uh, Graham Day's motion. Uh, the local press and local newspapers are important for a plurality of reasons uh, that have been expressed here. And th I thank uh, the member once again for bringing this debate uh, to the parliamentary chamber. <coughs> Thank you, Minister. That concludes Graham Day's debate on the importance of local newspapers. Can members note the earlier time for returning today? I now suspend this meeting until 2 p.m.